I've done enough university things. Ever ever since the Netflix documentary came out, I lost count of how many universities in in. I, well, I, mean, I was gonna th- ask you about that. Honestly, we could start there because that was when yeah. I um, when so, I got sent your contact info. I I hadn't so I haven't seen. I'll be very transparent. I haven't seen. It's behind the curve, right? Yeah, behind the curve. I haven't seen it, but I've like read the Wikipedia page, and I was like, well, I was excited to interview. I was like, I was like, he's like kind of famous in the <laughs> in the sphere. Like this is my my first person that I'm interviewing with their own Wikipedia page. So, <sighs> you but know, how I was that even, for you? But first off, I didn't. When you when you get to be a certain level, you don't have to do things, which is so weird. Uh, I've heard this before, which is it's it's ironic when you when you reach a certain level of you want to call me infamous, that's fine. All of a sudden things start happening to you that you have no power over. Like I never I didn't even know I had a wiki page until somebody told wow. me that's that's like, oh, yeah, you have a wiki page. It's like and people will do stuff for you and never tell you that they're doing it. You know, like, a, like oh, oh, you wow. have an IMDb DB page. It's like, really? It's like, who's doing this stuff? Who's and, doing and that? Get, is it accurate? Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. What am I going to do? You know, unless it's really blatantly false, you know, uh, you know, unless somebody makes a wiki thing and puts a segment. And it's like how Mark was acquitted of all those murders. It's like, all right, maybe I should change that. But the rest of it, right. you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, Honestly, when... I had about as much faith in the Netflix documentary as the producers did. Um, a lot of people don't know, you know, when you see it on Netflix, so you think, oh, when when he says Netflix presents or whatever, you think that, oh, Netflix started up this big project. No, no, Netflix buys stuff. That's what they oh. do. So okay. they go to film festivals and they will, if you don't, if you make a film and you do not have a distributor right away, you have to go to film festivals and you got to put your stuff out there. You're basically auditioning Mm -hmm. in film festivals. And the producers were absolutely, not only did they hate the topic, you can tell, I mean, they slanted against us. It was, it's a hit piece, but it wasn't supposed to be a hit piece when it first started out. And then they were like, well, we're never going to get any film festivals. So it's probably not going to be anything anyway. Right. Got into every film festival they applied to. I mean, you should see the list. You should see the freaking list. I, I lost count yeah. of the amount of countries. I mean, we were in Moscow for a week. I wasn't personally. They but but they yeah. went over and, and and did the Moscow thing. I got to do other stuff. Uh, but but th- when it came out, um, when when it finally was picked up by Netflix, that's when I knew that we were there was something else going on here because uh, there my email load, which was already pretty big as it was, doubled in a week. All of a sudden, you know, I started, I started calling people saying, like, is something happening? What, what's going on? And they said, oh, Netflix picked up the, the documentary. It's like, what? Oh, God. Because wow. Amazon had already picked it up and iTunes and, and um, YouTube Red and, and those guys. So, yeah, it was. I'll, I'll give you two quick stories um, of the Netflix thing, okay. which was I was doing street activism. I, I was over in the UK for a Flat Earth conference. and. I was in, we had traveled to, we were doing different street activisms in different towns. And I was in Dublin, it, of all places, never been to Dublin before. And, and it's pretty much like you think, right? A lot of yeah. drunk Irish people, right? And they, they do that deliberately. It's like, oh, tourist attraction. Look, there's actual drunk Irish people, right? And these three girls. And it's girls, foggy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. The weather's terrible. I mean, come on, I'm from I'm from Seattle, so I know. I mean, right. that, the climate. I totally get that. So, um, there's these three girls, university girls, that are clocking me from uh from off in the distance, and 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 they're like, come over here, come over here. And I go, what the hell, right? And I start talking to them. They go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I go, what? She goes, we thought you were French. And I go. Why? Why would you think I was French, right? And they said, well, well, because the the Netflix documentary is dubbed in French, and and it's like really because oh. you know if you have a, if you have a certain budget, you get dubbed. So if you're if you're if your yeah. documentary really starts tr- starts tracking, they'll they'll dub it. So like we're you know it's, there's me speaking in German, me speaking in French. I've never spoken a, a lick of that. Yeah. And now I imagine you know if you had to do it again, you could use the AI software and get my voice fairly. Oh close. yeah. Um, the other thing real quick, which was, uh, this will give the whole, again, I'm not famous, but there was some fun moments. <laughs> I mean, I'm not Lord delivers from Taylor Swift. I'm not, we'll never be her, but that's a whole nother topic <laughs> for another day. 
by the way, the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. Taylor will be on the field for that. The NFL is completely rigged. And again, oh, I get it. Bread, bread I, and circuses. I have so much. This is the Super Bowl that no one wanted, that no, no one wanted. And that's like, I can't, I also can't believe that they'll stick to the Super Bowl script over like what would make a good game. But of course, give, they will. give the people, you know, I learned this years and years, which is why, why I stopped watch, watching the NBA, which is there's something that changed. Once you get enough money, there's a, there's a line from a movie years ago, which was once the NFL started implementing TV timeouts, right? Commercial timeouts. Yes. That's when the game changed. There was so much money going into the NFL. The corporations were dictating the pace of the game, which any coach will tell you. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. You only call timeouts when you absolutely have to call timeouts. You want your momentum to never change. It's like, no, the corporation is like, no, no, no. We need we need a commercial break right here, right now. And we're yeah. paying you to do it, so shut up. And then they the, give the people what they want. The people, no offense to the best teams. The, the You give the people what they want. So if the public wants certain teams in the Super Bowl, that's what you give them. And once the second time, I mean, mid-season, I called it. The second time I saw Taylor Swift in the skybox, I'm going, oh, God. Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. Yep. The Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's absolutely guaranteed. They're, and they're going to win it. And, and 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 when they made it to the game, you know, that final game before the Super Bowl, it's like, oh, yeah, she's going to be on the field. There yep. she is on the field. Big hugs, cross promotion. Let's get Swifty. You know, let's do the duel. Let's get Swifties. Wow. Get interested in football. Let's get some blue team interested. And it's like, no, the red team hates it. Blue team, no offense to to, to you guys. But anyway, so anyway, so, so real real quick. So I'm on a plane. By yeah. the way, I understand why, like, she'll never be able to fly first class ever again in her life. Right. First class. That's a yeah. downgrade for her. Right. And the reason yeah. why I was thinking about it actually this morning, because there was like at least five or six Taylor headlines in my, my thing. Yeah. In my feed, and it's like, and it's like, well, because one, she'd have to get on the plane at the very end, because everyone would walk up to first class and take selfies constantly. You would have to have a flight attendant bare walled off in the front. It's like, oh, can I talk to her again? No, she can never fly first class again in her life. She will yeah. always have to take private jets. Meanwhile, people like me who have to, you know, muddle through business class, right? So I'm I'm flying to a conference in um, New Zealand. And this guy, if you probably don't know, but if if you're flying really long distance, uh, you are the they have to distract you with with basically alcohol and food constantly to keep you from going insane. It's a 20 hour flight yeah. or whatever. So there's oh. this guy who's just walking around with bread, different types of bread. Right. And he walks up to me and he goes, he goes, hey, you want any bread? And I'm going, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. And he looks at me, and goes, you want some bread, right? And I go, and it's like, oh, oh my this God. Is yeah, yeah, it's like the oh. Mission Impossible. Is he like gonna hand me some spy shit? Yeah, What's do I happen? have to take the bread? Yeah, do I have to? And, and, and I, I, I'm like, all right, I'll play along. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take a couple of those garlic rounds, you know, at the bottom, right? And he gets his tongs out. He goes, yeah, you want those because they're flat and they're round. Wink, wink, right? And I'm going, get out of here. Oh and my gosh. And I go, I go, really? He goes, yeah, man. He goes, he goes, love what you're doing. I go, he goes, I can't talk. I'm going to keep passing out bread. Right. And then I never saw him again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so freaking wild. So yeah, that, that That's happens so to me funny. every once in a while. The only thing that slowed us down was the pandemic, to be honest. So yeah. anyway, sorry. I, I don't know how much time you have, but what throw, no, throw whatever it's you okay. got. It's okay. Yeah, I guess to, I mean, that's a great start. It's so funny. This is already reminding me. I feel like I listen to a lot of podcasts where they get like 20 minutes in and then finally they're like, oh, by the way, here's our guest. Like this is, and then they finally <laughs> introduce them. That's that, what this that is happens to up. me. That happens to me a lot, unfortunately. That's and so and stop me if I'm going off into the weeds too far because oh, uh, no. uh, cause I've been doing this now for um, the clues, for example, which you might be aware of. Um, the the Flat Earth Clues, which kicked off a lot of this stuff, uh, turned nine years old on the tenth. Nine oh, years wow. old. Yeah. That's so incredible. go. That's that's how long I've been doing this. So there's a lot of content in my head at this stage. Yeah, I guess you know what that gets me. I guess kind of back to one of maybe the first questions I should have asked, which is what? when. So when did you start? So you started making content like online like nine years ago is that what you're saying yeah exactly or almost exactly so yeah. almost to the day nine years ago um i looked into it in the summer of 2014 uh okay. because i was again i never got married or had kids and you don't know this yet but if you don't get married and have kids 
eventually you reach the stage where you have a lot of free time on your hands. I mean, loads of it. Yeah. And I was there. I was there when the internet was new, when you could finish it, believe it or not, back in the day. I mean, you could actually go through. It's like, is there any site I haven't hit? Right. Because there weren't that many mm -hmm. out there. And some of the first ones were conspiracies, you know, rabbit holes. And we won't go into too many rabbit holes unless you yeah. want to go into rabbit holes. And that's totally fine. I'll try to keep it brief. And <laughs> when I, I and because of that, I looked into a lot of conspiracies all, all the way up until 2014. You know, I, I was a big yeah. uh, JFK fan, 9-11 and the moon landings and Pearl Harbor and all the great American conspiracies and then the smaller stuff and the European stuff to where I'd run out of conspiracies. And then. Finally, I was like, well, I'm not getting any younger. I might as well look at the worst conspiracy, the one that nobody looks at because it's so obvious and so stupid, which is flat earth. Yeah. And it's the only, you know, it's the only conspiracy we debunked to children, by the way. Uh, you know, it's we we don't you don't tell anyone in a first grade class about JFK, but you do show them the globe. You say, Oh, yeah, we used to think it was yeah. flat. Now it's a globe. We're gonna put this in the corner of your classroom. It's gonna sit there for 12 years. That's by the way, high level conditioning to put a globe in the classroom for 12 years. I mean, the CIA paid top dollar for that sort of stuff. And um, so I looked into it and, and and I was like, okay, I can knock this thing out in a weekend, piece of cake. And you'll know this, that you'll catch part of this in the documentary. And, and if you don't have a copy of it, if you want me to send you a um, uh, a low res DVD copy, but it's everywhere, you can find it in two seconds. I, was uh, saying, I think it's, is it, it's still on Netflix, right? I, I think you can get Maybe. it anywhere. I know you can get it on Amazon. Okay, yeah. But whatever, pay the, three, pay, Amazon, the, yeah. pay the three bucks. It's totally worth it. Um, and it'll to and seriously, it'll fill in a, quite a few blanks because it's a it's a snapshot of me doing my stuff. God, that's so long ago. 2017 was when we filmed most of this. Wow. You know, going at least six years ago. So anyway, uh, I, I so I thought, okay, weekend, totally. And snap, you know, break this thing off and 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 be done with it. And so uh, that weekend turned into a month, which turned into months, which turned into nine months. And then finally in February, literally February 10th of, of 2015, I woke up uh, again dating myself with the Jerry Maguire moment, Tom Cruise movie, uh, where he wakes up and it's like, wait a minute, I think I've got something here. And I did. I mean, I thought it's like, I'm going to go the other way and I will put a series of videos out there because I think the internet hive mind misses nothing. They don't. And yeah. uh, uh, let's let's do this. And and I put all my contact information out there. It's like I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Show me where I'm wrong, Internet, right? Because again, put your women should yeah. never ever do this. Men can can kind of get away with it, and even then, it's not a smart move because the trolls are out there, and yeah. the trolls didn't come at me. In fact, people came at me that which I I didn't expect. Uh, all podcasts almost immediately started contacting me. Um, uh subject matter experts and people members of the military some most of them wanted to remain anonymous others didn't and they're like yeah it's not that crazy and here's why and they started adding things to it to where i was waiting for the other shoe to drop for the first six months i mean i i thought it's like somebody's yeah. gonna shut this down i mean you're you're young enough in school if you've ever done a test or a blue book where you were 99 percent sure you aced it where you're going to turn it in. You're like, oh man, did I, did I crush this or did I not? And I yeah. was pretty sure I did, but there was that nagging thing. It's like, what did I miss? I had to have missed something, but I'd been working yeah. on it for nine months and I'm a fairly clever problem solver. So I'm like, it's like, if I missed something, it was pretty small or, or really dumb. And, and nobody from academia to this day contacted me and, and said, oh, okay, here's where you completely botched it up. You were wrong on this. I wasn't wrong. I was making some uh, assumptions and connecting some dots on some things, but I wasn't wrong yeah. to where they were calling me out as wrong. And that's when everything just started spiraling uh, to where it, it people treated it like it was a brand new thing on the internet. It's like no, it's not. We talk about flat Earth is one of the oldest concepts there is. You could you could yeah. literally go in to to Google, type in ancient cosmologies, and click on images, and you'll see every culture drew the exact same thing, which was like some snow globe, which was weird. And but people are treating it like it was new, and uh, here we are, nine years later. A lot of stuff well, is so happening. So funny. Sometimes sometimes it feels like anytime like an idea pops up on a new platform, it gets pointed to as like that's completely new. Like that, I started seeing that it showed up on TikTok, like maybe, I don't know, a year, maybe, gosh, and, I don't know how long and, TikTok's been around now. Shane, at least, at least like, a year. Yeah. Yeah. And people were like, oh my gosh, like flat earth, this is like a new thing. Yeah. 
And I was like, this is, wait, like I've, I've seen, I've been following this on Reddit. Like what is, and it's just, every time it jumps platforms, everyone gets to point at it and be like, that's totally new. Yeah. Every, every time it goes on to, you froze there for a second. We'll see if it catches up. Are you still buffering? Um, am I back? Oh, I'm moving. It's really weird. Your camera is, no, you're good. Your camera is got this weird, it's got, it's got a super wide angle lens on it. You're in a, a massive. You're in a massive yeah, it, rec, rec, rectangle. No, it's cool. I mean, if you, if I mean, it's like you're shooting ultra panorama. I don't think there's a monitor I have that can, that can well, fill that so whole funny. thing. This is just my MacBook. It's nice. It makes my apartment look much larger than it actually oh, yeah, is. It makes, it makes, yeah, it makes your whole thing look huge. The um, yeah. if you had if you had a studio behind you, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I can see mm-hmm. like all your kitchen cabinets. The yeah. um, uh, where where is it going with this? Oh yeah, yeah. So every platform that comes online, right? Every new platform immediately gets filled with whatever's on the other platforms. You know, because the I, in fact I yeah. did a, a speech about it in Vegas uh, fairly recently, where I was talking about the the first generation and second generation click chasers, and there are a lot of them out there. Um, you know, yeah. you, the the stats. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, everybody in Gen Z something like along the lines of 35%, maybe even pushing 40 now, they want to be influencers as a career. Yeah. And because, because, and because the first generation click chasers, right? The millennials made it seem so glamorous and easy. It's like, oh, yeah. isn't this fantastic? I'm an influencer. Behind the scenes though, they're working their ass off constantly. Yeah. Right. And so where was I going with this? Uh, uh, if you've never seen... Have you ever seen the doc? Here's a documentary I recommend. Not only behind the curve, definitely watch it, but uh, watch uh, Fake Famous. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I have it. Oh, watch Fake Famous. It is brilliant. Fake famous, I'm googling it. Right Where now. a producer decided, I'm going to do a casting call in Los Angeles. Where are you? Oh, you're you're in Ohio. Uh, I'm in Ohio, Athens, Ohio. Yeah. So not quite That's LA, right. but. That's right. So so he did a casting call and he said, I'm going to take six ordinary kids who don't even have a social media presence at all i'm gonna make them famous for nothing for doing nothing right and it's amazing the process because you can as you well, may or may not know you can buy likes and hits and subs and yeah. all that stuff it, it, it is it, the the asian markets no offense to the asians um they have took the they have taken the game currency market which was brilliant which is they've been selling game in-game currency to americans for years right which is like we'll just mine whatever gold warcraft gold we'll sell it back to the americans yeah. and then all one of them said wait a minute what's the difference between likes on youtube and warcraft gold nothing absolutely nothing it can be farmed just the same way you know in in metaphorically and it's like will the americans buy them Turns out they will. Absolutely. In fact, the, mar- the market was huge because the kids were were playing catch up with each other, which was um, there was a line in there from the producer. I don't get off track, but I'll I'll come back in a second. Which is he said he he goes he wanted to make a point. He goes he goes you don't understand. He goes there are millions of kids out there with at least a hundred thousand Instagram followers, right? And he goes there's only ten thousand famous people in the world at a given one time. Who are all these people? It's like, yeah, it's not real. It's all because every no kid wants to be left out. So it's like, well, I have to buy Instagram followers and I have to buy, yeah. you know, yeah, you got to keep up. And everybody, it's kind of like the um, the the movie, the Emma Emma Stone movie, um, Easy A, where, oh, yep. if you, you remember the Easy A, the concept was, was she pretended to sleep with these guys and all the guys were like using that cred, even though all the guys yeah. knew secretly it's like oh yeah he didn't sleep with her and i didn't sleep with her nobody slept with her right but yeah. they all had street cred it's like yeah but it's all fake it's actually it, that that movie was ahead of its time in terms of social yeah. media credibility anyway there you go yeah that's I know you got, how is it go ahead no i'm this is so interesting to me because i also just love i mean part of what got me into flat earth at all was also just internet history and the fact that like it is in general conspiracies are one of those things kind of like it's like conspiracies furries and like <laughs> a great, handful of other great, groups have great. been have been like the the like groups that have been at every stage of the internet like from its conception which has been so so interesting but Con- i don't know what's it been like go ahead. go ahead no no ask your ask your question 
go ahead. Oh, I was just, I was just going to ask what it's been like for you being a more public face of flat earth. And like you, you have all your contact info on YouTube and stuff, which I feel like is a very like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, not, to me, it feels like a bold thing to do. <laughs> it's, it is, but, but from a woman's standpoint, uh, it, yeah. It's different. I'll give you a quick, quick example. Um, way back in the day, I was an America online forum consultant, you know, when I was young, you know, I was, I was doing that and you had a little profile that you could put on America online. And I put all my contact information on there because why the hell not? Right. But, and yeah. so I remember I was in my office and the, a group of girls from the middle of freaking nowhere just called me. Like you could tell they were high school girls, at least 10 years younger than yeah. me. And they, um, or nine or so whatever, they were younger than me. And they, and they go, Hey, we're just curious, right? They had to, they had to like, like get all brave to call. And they go, why do you ever contact him for? And I go, well, cause I'm a guy. I go, women, women, girls cannot do it. She, to this day, yeah. they cannot absolutely not do it. And the reason is, is because men are pigs. Men are idiots. <laughs> They're just <laughs> terrible, which is what the, the bar rules for men apply for everything which is a man will, will sit at home, have a couple drinks, right? And then all of a sudden, they'll be like, they'll be like oh yeah, I'm totally, I'm, I'm the guy, right? I'm, I'm, you know, all women are into me. And that woman right there who I see on the internet, even though we have never spoken, she has no idea who I am. Yeah, I got a shot with her. That's the thing. I got a shot with her. Oh, look, there's her phone number. Oh, it's only like 2.30 in I'll the morning. Call her. I'm, I'm going to call her. And they will. They will absolutely call you relentlessly yeah. and what and you know and they'll call i mean and come come on this has happened to me a couple times usually with drunk guys not because they're trying to hit on me but they'll like they've got like a globalist point i had a guy call me like 27 times the other night it was rare but it does wow. happen like you'll get I, because you can tell you know it's in their head right it's yeah. like you know what i got another point i want to call i'm gonna give him a piece of my mind every message was maybe 20 seconds long it was it was almost incomprehensible to, to understand wow. but uh yeah so anyway to your point what is it what is it like being um um there are certain obligations meaning you do have to people look to you to um to take the helm to to take some leadership roles because you know, you're the old because date one thing social media has changed is it time and date stamps everything so they know who was there first and because it's like, okay, so apparently after nine years, I'm OG, which I think stands for old guy. And they, um, they call, they contact, it's like, oh, hey, would you like to do a public speaking thing? Uh, hey, would you like to, uh, you know, come to our, like, I'm flying out to a, a meetup in Salt Lake City, uh, in three weeks because they, they, it's like, oh yeah, can you make a, a public appearance? And it's like, yeah, that, that happens sometimes. It's like, you just get flown out. What I've learned is you have to say yes to a lot of stuff. Uh, because if you, if you don't and you, and you gotta like it, it's like, look, it's, this part of what, what you, what you are now, you said yes in the beginning, you have to keep saying yes. If you don't, uh, people will resent, will resent you a little bit for, for it's like, well, he doesn't care, or, you know, or, or they'll be suspicious. Remember the conspiracy crowd, they'll be, they'll look at you sideways, you know, almost immediately like, okay, you know, why, why is he, why isn't he doing things? Uh, and right. so, it's, it's, but sometimes that, that works, that backfires on you. So like there was, um, uh, a mobile company in Australia that called me up and said, Hey, would you like to do a commercial, a television commercial in Australia? It's like, sure. And it's like, can you be here in 10 sure. days? Sure. Why not? Right. And, and so I go down there and then people, you know, immediately say, Oh, he's selling out. You know, he's, a, you know, you used to be about the music, man. And now you're just tapped and sell out. It's like, come on. It's wow. like, look, I, I, I have not been shy. I said, look, you could tie me to a chair and throw pies at my face. As long as I get to say flat earth oh, and you pay me for it, I'll do it. As, but as long as the message. Now, when I was down there, they tried to make me say, you know, in 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 kidding that I believed in the globe. And it's like, oh, yeah, because I'm going to do oh. that on camera. Yeah. You're not going to use that in any sort of outtake reel or maybe in the actual commercial itself, which I think, yeah. you know. What my, it's like, no, of course not. And it wasn't in the contract, so I wasn't going to. I got to read the script, and I approved the script. And it's like, yeah, sure, totally. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, it's it's a double-edged sword, but I don't I don't mind because it's again, it's it it is my role is what I do. I'm I am uh, I don't I don't do debates that much. I don't do the music. I don't do a lot of classes or the app stuff. I I'm the I'm the intro guy. 
to this. So if you're gotcha. getting into flat earth, I'm the guy, I am the freshman recruiter. I'm the guy that walks you around the flat earth campus and points out stuff. It's like, yeah, if you want, you know, tries to stay upbeat and, and friendly and not get mad at anybody. Cause look, it's freshman recruiter, right? How much trouble could yeah. you, you know, that group get in? It's like, you no, know, don't wander. No, 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 no. And we're walking and we're walking, you know, that's, so, I was great. literally, I was going to like later on, I was going to ask if you saw yourself as like an educator or like what your role is. I feel like Re intro guy or like freshman Re recruit recruiter. Is recruiter. Great. Seriously. Yeah. Um, you know, I did the, the university thing for a number of years and I got the freshman recruiter gig, which was, mm -hmm. but you know what, but because of that, I'm also the one-on-one books. So you, you've had, probably had this discussion with like juniors and seniors, right? It's the classic discussion of all universities, which is because seniors say, Hey, who are you reading now? Right. What, what classes, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm into Mark Sargent. And then seniors say, oh yeah, I used to be into Mark Sargent, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but, but now, you know, I'm into, you know, Jaron or I've been to Eric or I'm into, you know, DIT or H or, or Witsit or all, any of those guys. And so I'm, I'm the, 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 the book that you read that's on the shelf that uh, you, you remember fondly and when you know and as time passes but which is nice i don't mind it someone has to be and you know the one on one book uh you know to take a line from uh the johnny depp movie blow from back in the day where he was talking he's going he goes if you did cocaine in the late 70s right early 80s there was an 80% chance that it came from me right because he was like the only distributor i was doing i yeah. had put my stuff out there when there was very very few people doing it and um, the other two, the the big which you'll hear about in the in the movie, um, kind of fell away. And so uh, I was like the last OG standing, really, except for except for Eric, who was the nemesis they couldn't use. And I don't mind saying this on your thing. Um, uh, they couldn't use every producer wanted to talk to him, but you'll you won't see him in the movie because he was anti-Semitic. Yeah. Media can't touch you if you're anti-Semitic. There are certain things, even nowadays, uh, which aren't allowed. And so, yeah. and I, t I warned him. I, you know, he and I weren't friends, but I sent messages through other people. It's like, dude, no, you absolutely cannot. The media has already told me. In fact, there's been like uh, uh, different documentary people. It's, it's like to tell him he will never see the the mainstream light of day if he stays on this path. And he was stubborn. He kept digging his heel, which is weird because he was a freaking yoga teacher in Thailand. Yeah, oh, I, it's, some, there's like a lot about his and I haven't I haven't spoken to him personally, but I've like watched some of his videos and there's I feel like there's so many aspects. I would honestly I'd love to speak to him because I feel like there's so many aspects of his like. His kind of persona that are so interesting in that they're so. They feel disconnected and somehow he is all of them. One of our one of our comedians, uh, Owen Benjamin, uh, who, who <laughs> like left Hollywood and burned bridges on his way out of Hollywood. Wow. Uh, he, he came up with a great quote for him, which was he called him Savanier. And you're saying and he just made it up on the spot. And it was such a great line because and he was talking about L.A. parties. And he goes, if you go to a, 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 like a famous party where there's a lot of people, right? A lot of famous people. Eventually, mm -hmm. you're going to start hearing whispers. It's like, you know, there's always some freaking guru, know-it-all, Zen type of guy in the back of the party who's mm -hmm. like do doling out sage-like wisdom, right? And he goes, and he goes, I'm just going to call this guy Savanye. It's like, have you heard? It's like Savanye's at the party. Have you heard? Have you talked to Savanye? <laughs> oh, dude, he is so deep, right? And Eric is that guy, even though he's not the guy at the party because he's always been alone in Thailand. Now, I heard actually he he made it back to the states and he's in Idaho. I heard that. Mm. That's a rumor that he's actually well, here in the states. Yeah. No one I have yet to see a selfie of everything, but he went over to Thailand um, real quick, which was he he was part of a class action lawsuit, medical lawsuit years ago. One like, I don't know, hundred grand in cash, right, out of it, which is pretty good for the nineties, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, well, where Especially can I go? For, I'm not... Like a class action lawsuit. Usually, you don't get yeah. that. <laughs> no, no. So it's like, yeah, you get six figures in a class action lawsuit. That's pretty good. That's great. And, yeah. and it's like, where can I go where my money goes a long way? And it's like, well, if you can figure out the language, Thailand, Thailand, yeah. you could live for a long time in Thailand. And so he went over there and started this martial arts studio slash yoga slash whatever 
and he just stayed over there and kept and then he started making content and shooting it over here um but because of various things he never came over to the conferences uh and then you know his videos about how adolf hitler is the greatest guy in the world it's like uh, no can't no certain things it's gonna stick around for a while anyway there you go i yeah, remember that's really interesting question. i also you've been the first person to openly like bring up any of the anti-semitism which i've just like kind of let people if they want to call it what they like i've kind oh, of I, been gently tiptoeing around it depending on who i'm interviewing I but is that like a pretty big rift in the community no no or, it's not a it's big hard rift. to get people there, to talk no no, about no it at all. most people uh, come on anti-semitism is alive and well in the world and yeah. so there are members of our community they're absolutely you know look there's a lot of eric dubay fans out there and if they'll they take everything he's got lock stock and barrel is like oh no whatever excel eric's selling i'm buying which is fine but i was one of the guys nobody i think dealt with more producers than i did very various producers field producers uh in studio producers you name it i was i was talking to these guys and uh, invariably they would ask about they would ask about matt boylan who you'll run into in the documentary uh okay. but you'll never i mean his stuff online just evaporated at this point and eric Dubay. Matt Boylan, I, what's the word I'm looking for? For a French Canadian artist, you know what? That's about, about as right. Imagine a French Canadian artist, good looking kid, multi talented, but he could paint like nobody's business. And he also wanted to get into acting. So he went to Los Angeles for a bit, got some bit parts, and eventually fled Canada to try to marry into citizenship in the States. Imagine that frame of mind, then all of a sudden realizing he could be a potential cult leader. Oh, wow. <laughs> the guy does not interview well. He is, he, he's, it's a combination of paranoia and ego that rivals like Jim Jones type, wow. type of deal. It, to, where, yeah. to where the documentary, and you'll know when you're in the documentary, they could not even negotiate with him because he would want terms. When he, when he was doing the thing, he's like, I want cash up front. I want residuals. Oh, and I wanted Mark, Mark Sargent condemned as a government agent, you know, in the movie. Wow. As, as, he wa I, like wanted these things in writing. And, and so what they did was they said, oh, fair use. We're just going to grab every bit of content. We're going to make it look like we interviewed you and put you in the movie anyway and try to stop us. And there was this great line. He posted this on online where he was just screaming he, because he's so passionate, you know, that art, the whole artist mm -hmm. thing. He was yelling at the, at the, at the, at the camera. It's going, I called and left messages with 14 different attorneys telling them that behind the curve stole flat earth for, from me. And no one will call me back, <laughs> right? And, oh my gosh. And like, I wonder why. It's like, do you realize that that record, those recordings are probably Christmas party worthy. It's like it's like oh, everyone yeah. drunk at the Christmas party. So like, okay, listen to this guy, right? Yeah. Imagine calling a law office and saying that that the producers in Hollywood stole flat Earth from you. It's just, yeah. and, he, and again, he called pretty, wow. pretty much everybody, the, the top of the top law firms in the Las Vegas area, because that's where he was living when he, when he wow. met his wife. So anyway, so yeah, I know I don't, I don't mind bringing up the Eric thing because look, it's like, I, I've, I've said it on multiple interviews yeah. just to get the record out there. It's like, look, you wonder why I get to do more stuff than he does. It's because he never backed away from it. So yeah. uh, anyway, there you go. Yeah, that is, that's really interesting because mm. it is, and it's, I mean, I've even, I don't know, I've had interviews too where the conversation is based around that has, it's very coded and it's very quiet and it's turned into being like, <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about. And I just kind of have to be like, yep, I know what you're talking about. And like, you can't, what? like, well, that's Again, one of the things that people don't want to talk about in an interview at all. No, you don't. I mean, yeah. I'm, I. I can I can frame it delicately enough that yeah. it's, it's like look like hey, come on, we're we're not it's there's no big secret uh, I'll give you a great a great line um we were there was a a, a producer a Jewish producer in mm -hmm. from True Television out in New York and she was creating a sizzle reel for her her um group out there because they wanted to make a reality mm -hmm. television show out of this still think it'd be an awesome reality television show but whatever has yeah. to be 
uh, and she um, and she wanted to get hold of Eric too. And uh, and I go, yeah. And I mentioned to her, I go, look at this video that he put out. Like at that time, it was like maybe three months ago. She's going, oof. She's going, yeah, that's never. And YouTube burned down his channel because of it. Uh, and then yeah. she made the sizzle, the sizzle reel without him. And you know, you could imagine, right? Because they're doing pitch meetings. Right, you know, big yeah. big room. It's like, well, what do you got, Rebecca? Oh, let me tell you what I got. Flat Earth, the reality show. Right? She puts it up there. I could not make this up. And they're like, so, can can we? Can I see you in my office? <laughs> they fired her because of it. Oh wow! Absolutely fired her. And but she wasn't. She was determined. She went to um, our Flat Earth conferences. And when two, boy, one, two, three years later, when when the Netflix thing came out. She, the VP that fired her, called her and said, uh, and apologized and said, look, wow. I'm sorry. I had no freaking idea that, uh, that it was this big. And Rebecca was way, way ahead of it. Uh, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, look, producers are paid to say no 90% of the time yeah. they shoot. That's what they're paid to do. Shoot down ideas. Like that sucks. That sucks. And they just get so jaded. Oh, come on. Why wouldn't you shoot down flatter? It's just dumb. I'll, I'll give you one more really quick. Um, uh, one of our celebrity guys who still won't come out, uh, was fine. I'm going to, I'm going to out him as much as I can. Cause he's not getting any younger, <clears throat> um, actor, Kelsey Grammer, uh, from okay. Frasier and cheers and, uh, the new Frasier thing on Paramount. You probably don't remember him that, that well, but uh, you, you can look him up. Very recognizable. Yeah. Well, it used to be one of the highest paid uh, actors in television and he wanted to do, he wanted to produce the flat earth, the reality show or, you know, type, oh, wow. type of thing. And he was, uh, but he was going to tie it into like ge general conspiracies and everything. And he told me we we were having um, um, dinner down down in Los Angeles. And he goes, um, he said, look, we can't find a distributor. It doesn't matter if you shoot, you can shoot whatever you want with, and you can spend as much money as you want on a film or a television show, unless you have a network to back it. What do you got? You got, you know, yeah. no one, you, no one's going to see it. And so even with his strings, even with his clout. He could not pull that thing off and it was like it's said uh, let us know it's like all right there are people that are holding us back at certain levels which is it's, again it's fine totally fine yeah anyway, that ahead. is oh i was gonna this is kind of a a little bit of a left turn kind of back to so you said i'm going all the way back to what 2014 was there ever a period of time where you were talking to like or like friends or like coworkers about flat earth before you were posting online or did you go straight to online? No, I, I went straight to online. I was in, again, gotcha. everything that happened for me, um, I was just lucky. In fact, if, again, if I, mm -hmm. if I ever had to write an autobiography, it would be called unsolicited. Uh, and chapter one would be called luck and clever because mm -hmm. I was between tech companies. And in Boulder, gotcha. so I didn't have co I didn't have coworkers. Now I had former coworkers. Oh wow, which yeah. I talk to and and this, but like anyone, you you're the the first human response to everything is denial, right? You know, for mm -hmm. for just about anything major. And so when I put my stuff out there, it's like well, it's like no one's gonna see this. So who who's gonna know? Right? Who's gonna even care? Right. And when those first interviews came in, when the first podcast started calling me, and they was it was almost instantaneously. All of a sudden, I had to start calling family members, right, and saying, "Okay, yeah. just prepping them, right." Even though it was, I, I knew the internet well enough. It's like, look, it's gonna take you, it's gonna take you a while to for this to get to general pop, right, general population. Mm -hmm. But when it happens, just just be aware. Now, because of my background with the whole fireworks thing, if you've never listened to it, uh, um, please listen to uh, Strange World episode one, which was on my thing, which was. I've done some weird things in my life anyway. Uh, I've made illegal fireworks on campus, which I was thrown out of university in my junior year uh, for the Native oh, wow. American reservations. I did that uh, because it, the the demand was there and I was good at chemistry. And, uh, and there was a lot of people in school, as you know, college kids are notoriously poor. Mm -hmm to where they they want to get paid and so i mean i had 32 32 kids on campus that were working for me oh my gosh it was huge it was all, it was absolutely monstrous and because life has wonderful plot twists uh one of the girls i had a girlfriend that didn't like one of the girls that was working for me because the yes the, i could tell the girl from new york she was angling you could tell she wanted to turn this into something yep. 
on the house my girlfriend girl girl radar it's like it's like oh no no, oh, yeah. no no she she's not working for us and it's like oh crap and this girl i remember going to it's like yeah you can't work for us this summer you know building you know she was just gonna cut fuse that summer and he goes like i had people it's like okay you're gonna do end plugs you're gonna drill holes you're gonna cut fuse i was the only person that worked oh, with gosh. the with the with the actual powder and she i remember it's like maybe it was a new york thing east coast thing she's oh no 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 she's going i want to get paid for what she was i was counting on that money we're only talking about back and yeah it was 1990 we're only talking about maybe a grand that she was going to make that summer but a grand in 1990 was worth something yeah. right it was, it was it was a little extra scratch she goes she goes you don't she goes you don't pay me she goes i'm going to drop the dime on you she literally said drop the diamonds going wow oh that gosh. day it's like really and of course and now i now i know it's like men talk a lot of smack right men talk a lot of stuff that they don't follow up on women when a woman makes a threat i have learned you do not discount it you just don't you just don't and so She's i don't going anymore to do it you called the freaking fbi right oh my and so god they, and, she, and she didn't know right and the fbi routed over to the atf and they ignored her <laughs> because it's a freaking college girl it's like you know it's like, like there's no way there's, yeah it's like whatever right so two weeks goes by right she runs into me on campus she goes back and calls him again <laughs> two weeks later she's like why is this guy still walking around i called you know it's like oh my god thank god we never got married it's like it's like it just or and so it's like all right fine 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 we'll write his name and literally i talked to the officer you know because it's very uh macho you know the guys that work and you know federal agents they're all right idiot men right you know the the really men you know men's men type of guy thing and and apparently one of the guys wrote my name down just wrote it down on a piece of paper that's oh all he did God. and put it in his pocket and didn't even think about it. They were busting some other guy's chemical company in Colorado. They weren't even kidding. It was a big chemical company. They were just checking to see where he got his chemicals from. And they on their way out, the guy just thought about it. And he's like, hey, hey by the way, did you ever run into a guy named Mark Sargent? And, and it's like, did we? It's like, we're shipping like 2,000 pounds worth of chemicals to him. Like, like it's already on the dock. And they're like, Oh, well, we'll be taking over this little delivery. And they were the one, the ATF were the ones that delivered it to me. And that's how the whole thing went down. Now, the only wow. reason I, now you're thinking, how did I know it was Lori, right? Let's use her yeah. real name. It was Lori. How did I know it was Lori? Because the, because I asked, because the agents and I actually became pretty good friends. You know, I'm, I'm an amicable, amicable, I'm a friendly guy. Yeah. And they, they, I haven't asked them. We were in their office. We were talking about this and that. We're going over, you know, various cases and, and stuff because they thought I could help them with other, other explosive things. And, uh, and I go, hey, how did you get me anyway? And they go, dude, this girl called and she kept calling, <laughs> right? It's like somebody you pissed off, right? And, and they go, do you know anyone that, you know, they describe and, and I go, yeah, you know what? I think I do. But before that happened, the last last part of this, which you'll you'll totally dig, I remember I was so upset from the initial bust when the ATF came up, you know, with tack, you know, full full yeah. armor, the whole thing, right? That was, but they didn't arrest me, you know. They just said, you know, read me my rights. They said, okay, don't leave the country. It's like I don't even have a passport, yeah. whatever. Like I can't actually. <laughs> I can't, couldn't even even if I wanted to. Yeah. Although I was right next to Canada, I was living in. Um, uh, Bellingham, Washington, which is right on the border of Canada. Okay, yeah. Not that it, it's like I didn't know anybody in Canada except my landlord, I think at the time. So um, I said, uh, um, oh, so so I was really upset. So I went to her house. So you know, because because you know, we we yes, we had dated a couple times when my girlfriend and I weren't in. <laughs> Funny enough. And I go to her house looking for some consolement. It's like, and I'm I'm like walking. It's like, yeah, I'm really down. It's like the ATF. It's like, oh, it's just such a pain in the ass, right? And, you know, they took all the stuff. And I remember sitting on her couch, and she's just staring at me like I'm some sort of mass murderer, right? She's like, her eyes are just huge. And I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, what the hell's wrong with you? And she's like, she's going, nothing, nothing. She says, she goes, you got to go. And I'm going. I'm talking about I just got here. Why do I have to go? He says, You you gotta you gotta get out of here. And she's literally, I mean, she weighs like a buck oh five, and she's like dragging me to the door. And that's like, what is the hell? She goes, she goes, she goes, I can't talk right now. She goes, I can't talk to you right now. And it's like she's like pushing me out the door. I'm going. And it's like, all right, fine. And yeah, 
and like I can see her looking out the window at the top window of the door. Just it's like, and and she had thought the entire time. I had talked to one of her friends later. She thought that I knew and that I was playing like a like a long game. Like I was gonna oh. do like sit on the couch and be like, you know, was like, yeah. So the ATF, uh, they were really, they were really, you know, really ruined my day. Not as much as I'm gonna ruin yours, right? And turn it into like, oh you know, and, and pull out a big carving yeah. knife, like just you know, ee, ee, ee. she thought that the entire time. Oh it's like no, I had no freaking idea it was her. You know, again, naive. You don't, you don't know. It's like well, well, denial. It's like why would she? Why would she? be the one to, to call the whole thing in anyway. So sorry, long story short, uh, I'd done, already done some weird stuff in my life. So family and friends, by the time I got into this, wasn't a complete shock. <laughs> was gotcha. it that, that had happened before They're I was like, 21. It's not illegal fireworks. <laughs> yeah. At least, yeah. At least it's not a federal raid. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it, you know, to where, to where I'm literally getting, I mean, I seriously, I'm, I have actually, I've got two, I've got two federal felonies on my record, believe wow. it or not. I'm a federal manufacturing explosives without a license and conspiracy to manufacture. And you're saying, what's that? Right. I did not realize this, you know, conspiracy, you could throw this into your thing. Conspiracy of course is used. If you ever watched law and order or any crime show, conspiracy mm -hmm. is used in our legal system every day, every hour of every day. Right. Which yeah. is, so if you rob a bank tomorrow, you'll get hit for armed robbery. But if you rob a bank with two of your friends, you have now all conspired together to rob the bank. It's a completely separate charge, mm -hmm. which means not only was it premeditated, it was organized. And they'll hit you, and it's a, and separate penalties for for each of those. Yeah. So yeah, I was hit with I was hit with two things because I was the ringleader, whatever. Anyway. Wow. But uh, so that's so they're your family. I guess your family and friends. I know you said you're not married. You don't have kids. But like, no, I don't know. Married, do you have like married, other married. family members that are like in flat Earth, or are they all just like kind of like supportive or like not cool with uh, it? Or how it, does that work? It's really split. Um, 90 percent of the flat earth community is still in the closet because they're afraid yeah. of friends and family and coworkers, mostly coworkers, because you don't want to be that guy. Right. Because yeah. things stick at work. It's like, oh, yeah, he's the flat earth guy. And every new person that comes to the employee, it's like, oh, yeah, that's the flat earth. That's guy. the flat it, earth guy. <laughs> yeah, it'll never end. So yeah. most of the people. But so I've had family members. Yeah, I've got family members that are in. I've got family members that are out. And then I've got family members that be like, oh, yeah, I'm totally with you. Don't ever use my name in public. <laughs> it's like, OK. And and there's okay. absolutely serious. And I I've, I've heard this not only I mean I've heard this from all sorts of people. I mean uh, Kelsey Kelsey Grammer didn't say it to me specifically, but there was like um an actor from uh, what was it uh, Seal Team one of the television shows, and he came to one of our when we were interviewing um, down at Shane Dawson Studio, and he was there in the background, and nobody knew who he was except for like one of our guys David Weiss. I don't know who by the way who you talked to. You should probably tell me at some point. But oh yeah. He, um, but the guy comes up to me afterward. We, we and I had not talked, right? And he shakes my hand at the end. He looks at me, he goes, he goes, I was never here. <laughs> and he leaves, right? And, and the reason was wow. he got picked up, he got picked up for the second year of his contract. And if you know anything about Los Angeles or, you know, it's like, look, if you get picked up for a paying gig, you yeah. don't risk it ever. And until, yeah. until your legendary status. And even then you got to play it careful. You know, because mm -hmm. there's a stigma to it. Do you want to be that conspiracy guy? I mean, look at Kyrie Irving. Um, look at Aaron Rodgers yeah. when he did, wouldn't, didn't take the shot. Um, look at all sorts of fun people out there. Or the number one tennis player in the world who's one of ours, which I, oh, I yeah. love. Um, Novak Djokovic, who did not put it in the tweet. He just held up a handmade drawing of the flat earth, right? And yeah. and And I have sent that to journalists, and they won't touch it. Because it's like, unless he says it or types it into X, it's not I guess it's not credible. It's like, really? He hand drew the flat. Even I haven't hand drawn the flat earth. Right? And he did. And, and yeah. I, he'll go. And he's a huge conspiracy guy. And, you know, obviously, you know, we were vindicated later when he um, was deported from Australia for not taking the shot. You know, the Australian yeah. Open when they threw him out. Because it's like, yeah. no, we, we can't make an exception for you, even though you're the number one tennis player in the world. And, and it's like, whatever. So that's what he came back the next yeah. year and crushed them. All anyway, right. Sorry. Keep going. Oh, no, I was just I'm honestly, I'm kind of following. 
I feel like for me, I know, I know. I get to kind of follow your lead too. But yeah, you got to be careful because I will lead you off road and eventually you're going to have to pull me back. So, Ooh, I guess here's a, here's a fun one. I'm also just kind of like looking back through like other questions I've asked. So I think maybe you'll have an interesting perspective on this because you make flat earth content. Do you, what do you see about like your style of content that does make you like accessible and like kind of like the 101 guy? Um, And are there other people that you feel like are making content in like a similar way that it's like accessible and like relatively introductory yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. there's o- there's yeah. only one there's only one other guy um so yeah i made my stuff for the lowest common denominator and gotcha. by that i that was very deliberate because i wanted to make it th- very easy for the public to understand uh mm-hmm. so i didn't use any math i used almost very few physical observations of any kind i never told people to go down to the beach with a camera and start shooting long distance mm-hmm. or anything like that um but that's a popular was, one in the great lakes here <laughs> oh yeah people, no, people no, like, I, I get, to, like was, lake erie that, those were some of the first phone calls i got which was people all of a sudden started running down to the beach instinctively yeah. with long distance cameras start shooting long distance like i never told you to do that where'd you come up with that and um and they just they just did people just started it's like i'm gonna shoot mm-hmm. over water and 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 see what i can see and when and the reason the reason i did that was um because when I was into when I was doing the software thing in Boulder when I was there for uh, 20 years, I was teaching blue collar factories how to use time and attendance software, which is fairly complex. It has to do with time clocks, right? Punching in and punching yeah. out, and it's like oh, punching in and punching out is easy. It's like yeah, but the rules for everybody are different. Every county's got their own different rounding rules and overtime rules and mm-hmm. bereavement pay and fuel, you know, all this fun, you know. Well, everything you can think of, it's all different. So the software is very, very broad. So you have to funnel it down to, remember, blue collar factories, right? You're you're going to places you'd never go to on vacation, like Blytheville, Arkansas, or Dixon, Illinois, or, I mean, where you fly into a major airport, then take a puddle jumper from there to a smaller airport. I mean, small enough to where when they shut Mm -hmm. off the engine, you start hearing crickets in the background right when you got walk off the plane there's nothing else in there it's like mm-hmm. it might as well be a um a u-haul warehouse you know as a, as a terminal and then you're talking to you know salt of the earth type people you're explaining software to them and, and because they, they come to you early it's like okay what is the bare minimum i have to use to keep this going and so i learned yeah. fairly quickly over um uh and then refined it over a number of years of how to dumb down for lack of a better term, but come on, let's call it what it is. The a real a complex topic into easy to digest pieces. And that served me very well when I got into flat earth. It's like, okay, you know, here's here's a topic which is really big, you know, uh, in in scope. But I bet you if I if I give it to them in like here's one, here's one, and this, you know, I was making <laughs> Like making making a nine minute video, right? You know, series of nine mm-hmm. minute videos back way before there was TikTok, right? Way and and it was only yeah. because YouTube, if once you if you don't have enough subscribers when you didn't back in the day, you could only make you're you're capped at 10 minutes for the for oh, the early yeah. days of, of YouTube. So it was like, oh, I was forced into that. And so mm-hmm. and so I just met started making these little little chunk videos. And then people started the reason it got popular was people again weird because i made myself creative commons license which means anyone could grab it right and so people grabbed all the clues crushed them down into one movie you know spliced them all together and put them on their own channel i didn't even know who they were and so and you I'll, you know i'll send you the links millions of hits where because people are going yeah. oh i loved your movie oh i loved your movie i'm going what movie are you talking about dude i didn't and, make a movie i didn't make a movie and so finally said dude i loved your two and a half you know two hour thing i'm going okay enough of this what link are you clicking on? You know, and so they sent me this. I've like, only made nine minute videos. I only make nine minutes videos. And and sure enough, there are these people out there that already had like two, three, four million hits. Never talked to these guys ever before in my life. And nor would I, because I made myself creative commons license. What I did not know is the first generation click chasers were scouring YouTube looking for anything that was Creative Commons license because they knew they could not get in trouble by posting oh. it on their channel. There was no copyright things and they could make um, they could make YouTube um, money off of it. Some of these guys make thousands of dollars off the Flat Earth Clues, that... which, was, which was fine, but that's how it spread as fast as it did, 
was people were That's doing. That's actually uh, so interesting to me. I have yeah. not, I haven't thought about the, like how, because that's How, everyone talks about like flat earth getting big again like via youtube but yeah. i haven't actually heard about like the obviously like, like creative commons license and then everyone has access to that and then it can get posted yeah. and reposted oh, yeah with, so with, with no reper no repercussions at all and because yeah. of that the other flat earthers were like well i'll be happy with like patreon or whatever it's like you know none of our none of the flat earth community copyright strikes anyone to where I put in the description yeah. box. That's the first line. I say, you can use this for whatever you want. I'm not going to strike you. I can't remember the last time a YouTube, a, one of our communities struck somebody. In fact, we've got, which again, kills me. Uh, we've got no merchandising rights really at all. <laughs> Nobody, you people sell flatter t-shirts all over the place. Nobody makes a freaking yeah. dime off of them. But we, most of our community doesn't care because all we care about is getting the message out which is kind of cultish in a way, you know, we're, we're you know, we, you know, I, I'm really surprised the, me the media hasn't latched on to that, you know, that it has not, because I tell yeah. people, I go, look, I'm a part-time cult leader. Let's call it what it is, right? I go, yeah, we don't have robes or, um, or Rolls Royces or a compound or chanting, but right. <laughs> there's a lot of religious, I'm sure you've heard of a lot of religious overtones. We use that verbiage, you know, are you a believer? Yeah. How long have you been in? You know, are are you converted? Have you seen the light, child? You yeah, know, like wait, like waking up or like oh, it's it's very akin to like oh, yeah. being saved. Very much, very much. In, in fact, the the yeah. fervor when you're at like the conference we just did in Vegas, um, the the fervor when you're in a room with hundreds of of your own kind, oh, it it turns cyclical to where it starts spinning yeah. up like a turbine engine, and nobody sleeps. Everyone's like, just, just, you know, because you know, you're not going to be judged by anyone there. In fact, and then it's yeah. the power of the mob to where people are walking by. I mean, we're already pretty good at street activism, but I mean, people in the hallway, oh no, and you're not shy at all. It's like a big street gang. It's like, what are you looking at? We're flat earth. What are you going to do? Flat earth. <laughs> Come at us. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That is, I guess. That reminds me of a different question that I haven't asked yet, which is, so do what? you have any like religious or spiritual beliefs that you connect to flat earth? Cause I know that's kind of a, a little bit of a distinction too. Like I've interviewed people who are like, I'm very like spiritual or religious and that's why I got into flat earth. And I've also interviewed people who are like, I'm actually not religious. I'm not spiritual at all. This is a separate yeah, thing. That is, yeah. And so half the community, I'll give you some rough stats. When yeah. we did our first conference in Raleigh, which you'll see in the documentary, seriously, you got to watch it when mm -hmm. you get a chance. But seriously, as soon as we're done, will, sometime yeah. in the next couple of days, you have to watch. It'll make yeah. so much more sense, which is when we were done, they were doing, uh, you know, a big census of what they liked and what they didn't like. Almost 50% oh. people said it was too Christian. And the other 50% said it wasn't Christian enough. That's and, funny. and it's, no, I'll give you my, my quick story. I was born, I was, I was raised born again, evangelical, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Church wasn't just a Sunday thing. We had youth group. It was actually very popular. Plus it was in the eighties. So, you know, we had a Wednesday thing. We had a Saturday thing. I went to vacation Bible school. I went to camp Malibu up in Canada. Oh yeah. I was uh, all into that. Yeah. However, but what, but was I, uh, you know, Bible thumping, you know, standing on the street, going door to door, you know, like, like, um, Jehovah's witnesses. No, you know, have, have you read the watchtower? No, <laughs> no, but <laughs> never understood that. Remember my mom just wound up on them when they showed up at the door. It's like, oh, oh no, what, what's that? <laughs> mom, mom would like just, break out, just doing... bring out the, bring out the King James. You know, and it's like, oh, good, oh, my gosh. Gonna blow. So, um, but when I, when I left, you know, again, I was raised on a, on a very rural Island, which you also see in the documentary. So I, I was very sheltered, extremely sheltered. So I didn't even know there was one, more than one religion until I went to university. Wow. But seriously. I had no idea. There were like five major houses. You're only you know part of one. And then I got into tech. I mean, immediately, you know, I started playing video games for a living and then I, I started teaching proprietary software and everybody and all my friends were heavy, heavy tech guys. And all, everybody in tech is is not they're not atheists, but they're definitely agnostic. It's yeah. like, look, we got better things to worry about. Like, when's the latest patch of Warcraft going to come out? 
<laughs> type of type of stuff. It's like, have you have you seen right. have you seen Fred's new new computer he just built by hand? Oh, it's so awesome. Super nerdy. Let's play Magic the Gathering on the weekends and mm -hmm. uh, watch sci-fi movies. You know, seen the Matrix a hundred. Well, what's the line from Beetlejuice? You know, I've seen seen The Exorcist 157 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Um, that was like us with like The Matrix and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't have been further away from the church at that point. But when you're staring at the whole flat earth concept, the whole enclosed world snow globe thing, mm -hmm. the whole thing screams some sort of designer. And at that point, yeah. you got to be like, I mean, God, you don't, that sort of thing doesn't happen by accident. And so, mm -hmm. okay, what are we talking about here? I, you know, now was I willing to say that it was, um, uh, you know, that, that, that Jesus Christ was the subcontractor, you know, on, on, on the building? process you know he's a supervisor not necessarily but at the same but at the same time no a spiritual what i kept hearing from people because there, there were like christian flat earth conferences that were happening that i wasn't even invited to because i couldn't quote enough chapter and verse believe it or not take on the world conference for oh. example great great one and but but everybody said at that conference said that yeah um flat earth is the most amazing recruiting tool for the church whatever church pulls because it takes people from like say 92 percent believer to 98 percent and you're thinking well it's only six percent it's like oh well, think of an eclipse you know yeah totality versus your you know the outside there's a huge huge difference there and so there were a lot of people and uh so the uh, let me end this part with this w will am i am i going to church on sunday on a regular basis no I will never do anything malicious again to anyone ever, period, because I believe that someone's watching. And I think the rules change when you know this kind of like not not saying that God's constantly staring over you, you know, like right above my head type of yeah. thing. I'm talking like a parent sitting on the couch looking over the top of the newspaper type deal. It's like, What's the kid doing? Just like, oh. yeah, he seems fine. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, because and, and I and the reason why I say that is uh, there was um, a documentary which may not have been mentioned to you called The Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. By Bart Sabra. Oh, I haven't heard that one. It's an interesting little documentary. It was made way before ours. And he was talking about the moon missions. You know, the moon missions, the, the American moon missions have been criticized literally since the day they stopped. Yeah. You know, like the 19, in the 1970s, they were nerds out there going, something doesn't look right. Yeah, what's going on here? And but the where are you, where do you go in the 1970s? The only place you could go would be like a UFO convention. Yeah, credibility right. doesn't <laughs> doesn't run high at those those venues. Mm -hmm. So, but they were but they were saying this for a long time. And Bart Sabrell did a thing called "A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon," and he found an old tape where they were faking um, some of the um, the the distant distant orbit footage from low Earth orbit, right? Which I think was leaked to him on purpose because I don't think there's low Earth orbit at all. But there, he did. But he made it. He turned did this new wrinkle, which I thought was interesting. He went to the original Apollo astronauts, the ones that were alive at the time, and he asked them to put their hand in the Bible and swear that they went to the moon. Real obvious stuff, right? You know, it's a piece of yeah. cake, right? Americans putting their hand in the Bible, piece of cake. Yep. These guys, unanimously, separately, com completely different parts of the of the country would not touch it they treated that bible like it was radioactive like it's like they wouldn't like they wouldn't swear on this thing and it all of a sudden got me thinking it's like oh yeah that makes sense because they know and if you know then it's one thing to lie with ignorance right because mm -hmm. you don't know it's like you're lying it's like hey lie yeah. about this it's another thing to lie and you know then you're lying possibly possibly against god and again, whatever God you want to say, right? That, but we're kind of splitting hairs here, what God actually is. Yeah. And but they would not touch it. Would not touch it. It was so bizarre to watch. I mean, I mean, they looked at the Bible with fear in their eyes. It's like, what the hell's wrong with these guys? Right. Wow. Well, the, the, one more lie is not gonna kill you, right? Just put your hand on there, say something. Mm -hmm. Not one. And so that again, circling back to my spirituality, that is what. It, that's what I apply to now. It's like I have no doubt in my mind that we are being 
watched for and and so and I think it's also part of why we're here. You know, the the giant reality show that is Earth. You know, that we're that we're part of this big thing. And we're supposed to be acting naturally. However, <laughs> when you kind of find out, it's tough to act completely naturally. And I'm not going to go against that. So the, the the saying is, sorry, let me let me throw this one more thing, is I'm not going to roll those dice. And that's what the astronauts were, too. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, fine. So now you know there is some sort of creator. Define them how you will. Are you going to roll those dice against it? No. no. No, you're not. No, because you don't know what the punishment is. You don't know what the repercussions yeah. are. And so it's like, if, if you're ignorant, it's like, oh, God, may be real, may not be. But all of a sudden you're like, so, yeah, the world's a big snow globe. Yeah, I'm not rolling those dice. And so I yeah. won't. And, and I've taken to the nth degree. Now, I'll defend myself, obviously, against, you know, bad things. <laughs> but uh, which is why I hate practical jokes so much. I hate pranks, hate practical jokes. Uh, which is why if somebody ever, you know, does some sort of punk thing, if Logan Paul ever shows up at his house, he will die horribly. <laughs> there's just, there's we... something about those like that's so funny that you bring that up because I'm thinking about like also like the YouTube like click chasers and click baiters. There's something specifically about like the prank channels and like the the practical <sighs> joke channels that sits so wrong with me. There's something oh. like not good. It, is, it has never changed. It is it is basically yeah. eighth eighth grade junior high boy mentality, which is that's that's what they do. It's like that transition between the time time that they're dating and the time they're not, where they're bored. Yep. And it's like, what do we do? Let's pull pranks on each other, right? Who knew yeah. that you could do a YouTube channel when you're in your twenties and appeal to that group? And that is what. So like when Jackass, yeah. you know the 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 yeah. series with John, Johnny Knoxville. Mm -hmm. That's what Jackass is all about, right? And then they finally just retired. You know, they were done. It's like, yeah. oh, we're turning. They're like, 40. all right, we, we like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've done everything. We've done movies. We've done the television show on MTV. And Logan Paul and other people like that filled that void to where Logan Paul's demographic was eighth grade boys. And he he and his brother, um, Jake, the, they, they <laughs> punked guys as much as they could. And now they finally transitioned. Funny enough, um, Jake does fake boxing matches where they pay people to lose. Yeah. And Logan went into world wrestling. Absolutely. I was like, hey, you know what? You guys can just beat your guys, get beat up all yeah. day long. If, if you oh, have I forget. You... Go ahead. One of them went to OU. I forget which one. Went to Ohio yeah. University, which is in Athens. I think, was it Logan? It might have been. For how long? Couldn't have been that uh, he long. Didn't, he did the not guy, graduate. The guy has I no think. vocabulary to speak of. He... And he, by the way, if you didn't already catch that, in case somebody else talked to you about it, he he was one of the early ones that punked our Denver conference. He showed up. Oh, right. oh yeah, look him up. Look up, look up Logan oh Paul Flatters. There's some wonderful I uh, wonder, footage. I wonder if that was when, because how long ago would, would that have been? Uh, 2018. That was the second conference. I walk. I walked out of the, that... of the conference. Might have been how you very shortly guy, after he left OU. <laughs> that would that would make sense. I think within he, a couple of years, yeah. I will give him credit in that he was ahead of it enough to where he knew he could get some traction from it. Mm -hmm. However, it backfired because he bribed our promoter to be quiet about it. Meaning he oh. paid him my X number of dollars, bought a whole bunch of tickets, VIP tickets and rooms for the room block and told him, he's like, don't tell anyone I'm coming. And I'll be damned if that promoter absolutely did not tell anybody to where it wow. leaked the night before. And I heard during a cocktail hour that it was him. It's like somebody came, because the speculation was rampant because our promoter said, oh, he's a singer and an actor. And it's like, uh, it's, and we're going, who the hell is this guy? Right. I mean, how many, act, it's like, is it Will yeah. Smith? Is it Jack Black? Like, yeah. Who, who, who the hell is it? Right. And you know, is it Billy Bob Thornton? And, and the, then all of a sudden somebody came out and said, oh yeah, it's um, Logan Paul. And there was almost no response from the, the cocktail room that we were in, except for me, because nobody knew who he was because his demographic wasn't our demographic. Our demographic is usually late thirties, right? His demographic yeah. is eighth grade. And so I'm going, oh, God, it can't be him. Because remember, that's when he had just done the suicide forest. 
the Japanese yes. suicide forest, which should have blacklisted him forever, but the people have the attention of a goldfish, so they forgot. Mm-hmm. I didn't forget. I was like, this guy is a freaking blight on the internet. I go, you can't have yeah. him show up for conference. And then I heard, oh no, he's gonna have the mic before you on that um on that first day. I'm going, like hell he is. I go, you're gonna give him a microphone? Oh are you out of and luckily for for us he has no stage presence to save save mm-hmm. his life and he has no he has no vocabulary but i walked I, I i made up my mind that night in the hotel room i go if it's actually because i couldn't believe it it's like you can't be serious right so i i remember that morning i um i was walking down to registration and i ran into one of the registration girls and i go do you know i go has the celebrity guest showed up she goes yeah she goes i have no idea who this guy is though I go, who is he? And she goes, oh, she goes, Logan something. And I go, Logan Paul. She goes, yeah. She goes, with it. he was with a bunch of guys. It's like, oh, God, that's it. And I turned around. I went straight to the airport and left. Never did my set. Wow. Well, no, I wanted to make a statement. And that was, yeah. and I was vindicated later because, you know, the promoter's like, no, he's going to make a serious piece. He's going to make his list go. I go, that man has never made a serious thing in his entire life. Yeah. Plus, he rented he rented a girlfriend from Australia, a model. He paid for a model to come in oh and pretend to be his girlfriend for the show. Can I officially say that he's in the closet? I have on on air because it's like, look, dude, you want to throw people off the gay trail? You only want to do it for so yeah. long. Hey, all God's children, I don't care. I just think it's ironic that he goes into world wrestling. Which is one of the few professions like, oh, right. great, he's never going to be able to come out ever. <laughs> yeah. Ever. So nice move there, clown. Oh, anyway, Logan Paul. Sorry. That is wild. No, that's okay. I didn't realize yeah, that. Look up, I'm gonna, look I'm like, up I have Logan, a whole host of videos now. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just look up Logan Paul Flat Earth. You'll see. Um, in fact, he even mentions me by name because, and that was one of the reasons I did it. He goes, oh, yeah, we punked the whole conference, right? He goes, except for Mark Sargent. Right. And and you could tell he was disappointed by this. And uh, he left the hotel partly because of a podcast I did that night when I was already back in Seattle, where Mm -hmm. I was talking to one of the guys who was still at the conference. And I said, uh, and I stole a line from a movie. I go, Logan Paul, I go, he should be cut up into little bitty pieces and buried alive. Right. And, and all of a sudden, apparently the, like his, his crew was like, yeah, we got to get out of here. Because he, they thought that the the rest of the conference would figure out, but they were smart because everyone at that point did realize that he was punking them. But yeah, yeah. He, yeah. But but again, to his credit, he punked us or tried to punk Flatter before almost anybody else did, because that's yeah. when you're when you're click chasing, you're constantly going into into all social media and looking at the metrics, like what's trending, what's hot, what's hot, can I get in on this, and that's what he did. Yeah. As someone who's started, I know we're running a little bit long, so you can let me know if you have No, that's stuff fine. That's fine. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go until, yeah. you get your, until you get your questions done. I'm fine. As long as you don't have okay, to be good. anywhere. Didn't you have a thing at yeah. um, three? I have a at three, um, but oops, I just actually did my computer. So there we go. Um, but I just, well, I just thought about this because you've been in the community for so long and you've been in such kind of like a, a helm spot almost. Where do you, how have you seen the momentum kind of like shift and change in like the past nine years? Well, up until, I'll give you a quick comparison. In 2019, mm-hmm. we were bulletproof. I mean, we, yeah. the, 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 okay, the first three years were amazing. Um, there mm-hmm. was a, there's a wonderful documentary, if you've never seen it, called The Social Dilemma. Mm-hmm. where they were talking about the Frankenstein monster that they built, which is all the, the major social media platforms, which is like they built mm-hmm. them and it's like, oh, they turned into something we didn't know. It's yeah, because the government would never allow this multi-Frankenstein right. monster to be built because they're going to monitor everything because the internet is a completely military backbone system. I mean, come on, it st- the internet started out as a bulletin board for the military. And it's like, hey, yeah. what if we let civilians use that bulletin board? And then what if we, I mean, the, the um, was it LifeLink? Look up something called LifeLink if you ever get the chance. LifeLink was a government program that want they wanted everyone to sign up and and post all their their um, personal information on it, right? And nobody thought it was a good idea, and so they killed the program. And one month later, a brand new program was implemented called Facebook. And it's like, oh wow, what are, they, what are the odds? It's like, yeah, the the Winklevoss twins sort of invented it, but the the help that they got from the outside, I almost guarantee, it was government. Um, so in the first three years in social dilemma, I'll give you this great line. Um, it was this French developer 
because when things that are recommended for you in YouTube on the side, that was written by somebody. It's like, why are things recommended for you on the side, right? Based on what mm -hmm. you search for. And he goes, he goes, he, he, they asked him, they go, what is the algorithm you used? Imagine this, Matt, I watched this and it was like the pride that I had in my face because out of all the thousands of topics on YouTube, he mentions one. Uh, he goes, well, if the average person that gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend? Right. Because YouTube is a television network. Right. No different than anybody else. And they wanted to um, create a binge topic. You're buffering for a second, by the way, but I think you'll catch up. Right back. Hopefully, Hopefully I'll catch up. As long as the audio is there. I'm sure I can hear you. Yeah. OK, perfect. So there you are. It's 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 buffering a little bit. So so. Again, YouTube is a television network and they wanted a binge topic like anything else. Flat Earth, and he wasn't kidding. The average person that was getting into Flat Earth was watching 20 videos in a row. They, they, wow. Because it's like, well, come on, it's a rabbit hole. It's like, okay, yeah. watching them, watching. Okay, no, I'm not going into work today. Watching, watching. Uh, if you ever get a chance, watch. Uh, there's a wonderful comparison to that uh, from the, the show from a few years ago called Portlandia. Where they were oh, doing a I binge. I love Portlandia. <laughs> Portlandia was great, and I it's further from the Northwest, so I totally get everything they're talking yeah. about. I, I've been to Portland a number of times, and uh, they were doing the Battlestar Galactica binge watch, and that's sort of like what happened with with Flat Earth. So those first three years, we were being promoted by um, by YouTube. Promoted. I mean, it didn't matter what you were looking up. It's like, oh, you know, potato salad recipes. Oh, here's two Flat Earth videos in okay. addition to potato salad. <laughs> every freaking yeah. to where people were complaining and finally they did a um uh, a senate hearing where they, they they broadcast it and they were they were changing the rules of social media and they're saying okay we're going to ban certain things we're going to ban and this was like the head of youtube we're going to ban false flag references we're going to ban snake oil medical misinformation and we're going to ban anyone that talks about uh the 2020 election in a negative light and we're going to recommend flat earth less and it's like that was the writer they included at the end. It's like, so we're not banned, but they're going to recommend us less. And that, then they absolutely were. Uh, they recommended us about 70% less, which meant the monetization <laughs> went down like by 70%. Wow, yeah. Everybody told me, it's like, dude, I am making so much less money because we're not recommended. But they they didn't hit the brakes on us. They just put took their foot off the gas. That was the first three years. That was 2015 to 2018. By that time, though, we had already saturated everything. And in 2019, we were absolutely unstoppable meaning we uh we did conferences in seven countries i went to like I think four or five of them um we went we, we were everywhere everywhere you could possibly imagine and then I'll, I'll give you a quick a quick little rundown so at the end of 2019 <clears throat> i went over to to london to do a flat earth conference all right came back got called by a morning show, like Good Morning Britain type thing only. I think it was just like the morning show. Uh, I'll send the links out there if you want it. It's, I look terrible mm -hmm. on camera. And um, and they said, said hey, can we, we can you fly out and do a morning show? It's like, really? I'll go back. So I went back, right? Did the morning show. Came back over, back to Seattle, got, got another call. And they said, hey, can you come back over to um, to London again? We'd like you to shoot a um, McDonald's commercial for Pancake Day. I was like, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to do sure. a McDonald's. Seriously, <laughs> if I would have done a McDonald's commercial, I would have been labeled probably forever. But it didn't, ma yeah. didn't matter. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do it because it was Pancake Day. It's a thing over yeah. there, right? Flat, flat and round. We'll put the map on it. We'll have uh, you point it. It'll be yeah. awesome. It'll be so, so, so great. I was supposed to go in the, the middle of February 2020. That's when all of a sudden I get an email. It's like, yeah, so the borders yeah. are closed. You're not going anywhere. That's like, I mean, seriously, they're like, bring a friend. I had a, like, I had a, a friend of mine. It's like, you know, she was like, oh yeah, totally go. So that w that was the only thing that slowed us down at all. And then all of a sudden, we couldn't do meetups, and we couldn't do in a well, no, one we couldn't, nobody could do international travel, and we couldn't even do domestic events because they required masks like yeah. the vegas the vegas conference was supposed to be in 2020 and they said oh yeah you can do it but everyone's got everyone's got to wear a mask i'm going are you nuts i go this is a conspiracy crowd no one's go, gonna yeah no one's gonna do it and even if they did all they do is pile them in the center of something and set them on fire it would be horrible yeah. 
And so um, for three years, we, we were really stunted on one sense. But behind the scenes, what was happening was, because people were home a lot, as you know, they were watching a lot of Netflix and they were watching a lot of TV. And when they were bored with that, they were going to documentaries. And when they were bored with that, they were going down rabbit holes. And the next thing you know, behind the curve, which had already done its three-year run uh, from uh, from Netflix from, from 2015 or, or 2018 to 2021, it came back into, into the top 10. Wow. Because people were like looking for things. I mean, come on. I mean, the reason why I haven't bought a new TV right now is because I don't know what I would watch on it. I've run out of things to watch. Again, because I have so much free time. Mm -hmm. Well, a note to people out there. If you don't get married and have kids, you can run out of television. You don't think it's possible, right? Because there's it's just so like many how you can run out of the internet. <laughs> yeah, how, yeah, exactly. You, how could you, run the, yeah. I, you can run out of things to watch. I mean, come on. I've watched so many foreign films and sub titles and dubbed things so anyway that's what really happened and so only recently now that the um uh so like last year when the, the mandates got rolled back that's when we just started taking off again and now we're freaking you know meetups all the time uh conferences yeah. the international conferences haven't kicked in yet again but like i just uh last weekend um a french documentary team had uh, had flown over and spent a, a day with me here and uh, they're 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 doing a documentary. Um, different. I mean, it's 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 morphed. Flat Earth seems like you were you were mentioning. No matter what platform comes out, Flat Earth seems to propagate into it almost instantly. Because mm -hmm. for the the big reason which I talked about in the speech is the younger people are looking for topics, especially Gen Zers, right? They're looking for topics that will get them clicks and credibility, legitimate clicks and credibility. Yeah. And it's like, what's the most interesting polarizing thing that's out there? The word's been out for a long time. You wanna get, you wanna have the comment section blow up, do a flat earth video. Seriously, when you, yeah. if you've never, I'm sure you've done it, type in flat earth into YouTube, don't set any filters and just start scrolling through and look at the channels that have covered it. Everybody's yeah. done it. I mean, when we did our Dallas conference, for example, in 28, 2019, was that Dallas? Was Dallas 2019? Yeah, it was. Dallas in 2019, Jimmy Kimmel uh, from the Late Night Show sent sent a oh, team. Oh, I feel like I, yeah. And he did a seven-minute skit on it to where, I you know. Say, I think I've seen that maybe, yeah. Well, I, was in, I was in it, and it's like, oh, God, you know, and. And to where he sent a troll. And then again, that was a brilliant punk, which was that's that's how you do a punk where you send a full blown team. You tell everyone it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll pay full freight. And then you send one guy to pretend to be a flat earther. He dresses up in the T-shirts and the hats and you have him start walking around. Well, this guy was an idiot. Plus, he got drunk at like nine in the morning. So he couldn't he couldn't keep it together. And so we sniffed. I will say this. The flat earth kind of it's it's a different cult in you've seen this in movies where we can sniff out a non flat earther really quickly because you yeah. can't fake the language and the, there's a look in your eye when you're talking about it right you you either you you can try to come off authentically but there's a passion behind the the flat earth community's mm -hmm. voice so yeah and we spotted him all, apparently i didn't because i wasn't looking for it right i i just knew that this yeah. guy w was was kind of out there and people say why didn't you know i go dude he wasn't even the strangest flat earther i had seen that morning the guy that followed him was in a wheelchair with little flags coming off the top and i, I think he was missing his legs below his knees it was like i was like what am i supposed to do i mean this guy was in like on yeah. the other guy the guy that i was talking to was on crutches so what, what, why wouldn't I think he, he was? But yeah, the most right. of the community is really, really good at it. So anyway, there you go. That's so so yeah, so so it's morphed. It's morphed. It's mm -hmm. it's it's never gone away. It's just changed into it's adapted to whatever the situation is. We've never gone away, mostly because we have a 99% retention rate, which you may or may not have heard, which I is Oh yeah. So once you're in, because again, I'm not here to convince you or persuade you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to just put the, the idea in your head and then it sticks like a marble in a paint can. You can't get rid of it. You got to resolve it one, one way or the other. It's like, well, that marble is going to be there forever or you embrace the marble. Yeah. And because of that, I didn't tear down the globe. You did. So if you tear, and this is also talked about in the documentary, if you tear down the globe, how do you, how do you build it back up? 
right? How it's very much like the Matrix in that regard. The line from the Matrix, yeah. it's like a why, a why didn't they take the blue pill? The whole movie hinged around one of the guys wanting to go back into the Matrix. We have a higher retention rate than organized religion. So what do you do? I mean, seriously, wow. I've yeah. very, very few people, very, very few, and most of them, it's because mentally they just couldn't, they couldn't handle it. Uh, something I had predicted but never fully came true was I was worried that like one or two percent of the population would like snap. Like, you know, it's like all of a sudden just yeah. start, like it's like where I where's a train I can run into type type deal that never happened. Yeah. You know, nobody, nobody shot up anything in our name. Nobody blew up anything. Nobody set fire to anything. Uh, it's a very, very peaceful group. So, uh, yeah, our retention rate is massively high. So because of that, it doesn't matter what happens to the world around it's like, oh no, it's still flat earthers. They're just, you've just put them into different boxes until uh, the situation where it's now changed. It's like, oh, again, once the mandates rolled back, it's like, yeah, we're back. Rolled back. <laughs> we're, just, we're just, yeah, now, then all of a sudden we start flying out to things and, and doing meetups and, and people were hungry for it. So, um, and, and in, in the meantime, the other platforms flourished. So now, all the YouTube uh, offshoots, which would be, um, you know, BitChute and Brideon and Rumble, yeah. um, uh, uh, TikTok, of course. I don't know what else will be after TikTok, you know, because it, it's so brief. But yeah, uh, it but feels it, like also, it keeps uh, getting shorter, and I don't know how much shorter it can get. <laughs> uh, that that's fine because we took the TikTok videos. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love the so kids looked at YouTube, grabbed segments of YouTube, put it on TikTok. Then yeah. we took the TikTok compilations, wrapped them up into a package, put them back on YouTube. Put back on YouTube. Yeah, and then it then just keeps going back and forth and back wow. and forth. And the kids then have more to grab from. And it's like, great, fantastic. We didn't come up with the idea of kids doing 30-second flat earth TikTok videos. I mean, seriously, how how far can you get with TikTok with, with 30 yeah. second videos? But some of them aren't terrible. It's so. really, it's really interesting. And there's like forget the last time that I looked it up how many videos there are under the hashtag but there's some like absurd number of videos oh, yeah. it's in like the I want to say it's in like the billions but I'm not sure why, it might be why we've we've got over a billion hits in just YouTube all if you add up all the all the channels now pro versus con there's still going to be mo mostly con because of the the, mm -hmm. the massive channels I mean like right now for example, um, who's the lead right now? View count. It's probably Shane Dawson still. Yeah, Shane Dawson, 40 million off of one video, which is wow. huge. And then and then Guy Perfect, 36. I'm sorry, Dude Perfect, freaking clown. Um, but all the Vsauce, right? Uh, mm -hmm. at, at 36 million, Mr. Beast again at 28 million, Jubilee at 26, and and so on and so on. I mean, you know, the biggest YouTube, and again. As you know, people follow each other. So once mm -hmm. a giant channel, once the first giant channel covered one, everybody, it's like, oh, and they saw the success of it. Why wouldn't they grab it? So the kids, yeah, of course the kids are going to grab it. Why, why, why wouldn't yeah. they? they? It's I have never seen a YouTube video get crushed, you know, on a, on a bigger channel. They all they all yeah. did well. Yeah. Now, would they do two of them? No, because they were worried about the comment sections. Because it's com it's not the it's not the numbers. Look at the comment sections when you go in there. I mm -hmm. mean, like the um, like the Shane Doss or the dude. No, oh, hang on. Earth are actually flat by by Vsauce, for example. How many comments are in there? Two hundred ten thousand comments. That's ridiculous. Wow. I know. Wow. Now it is it is it is how many years ago? Quite a few. But 210,000 comments, you could spend your whole life and never get through that that string. And yeah. that's just one. And that's what that's when everyone started learning fairly quickly, which was it's not just the likes and the and the hits and anything else. It's the comment section. Because if you don't know anything about metrics, the metrics also includes how many people are engaged in the comment section. Yeah. And the, it's a fight. It's a full-blown people get really and yeah. and some big channels. They're like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that anymore. You know, there's too many, right. there's too many people saying things like, why did you even give this topic a platform? And it's like, yeah. well, if you knew anything about the internet, of course they were going to give it a platform. Right. That's the <laughs> whole point. 210,000 comments on one video. That's insane. That is crazy. Yeah. Or, or again, that's well, often look home. into, what? I'll have to look into, I wonder if I could get, so I'm in, um, 
technically I shouldn't have to take classes right now because I'm in the last year of my master's, but I didn't take enough credit hours last year. And so I still had to take one class per semester. Yeah. Um, but the class that I'm in this semester is about like social media data analytics. And we've been talking a lot about like YouTube comments and how accessible they are as like sources of data. And it'd be really interesting. I might try and find one of those videos with the like 210,000 comments. Well, and the, ask the my one... professor and be like, be like, how do I like, cause you can do like cool, like, like sentiment analysis where you can see if there's like a ton of like positive versus negative comments and like crazy well, stuff that I don't well, understand how to do yet. <laughs> that particular one is just a generic Vsauce video called is earth actually wow. flat? where um and that was one of the early ones he got that one out yeah well that was that was back right around the time the clues came out he had he addressed it really fast and oh, so and by I the way yeah if you're doing video you, have you i just i went to look it up and i i have to have watched it years ago yeah sure like maybe what i was not, following not a great stuff. video i don't remember I'm it not, at all yeah I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of him but hey you know i could be a, i'd be a terrible producer because um you, you, the producers, one of the rules is you, you never know what's going to resonate, right? Yeah. And people's like, it's like, why, why do we make so many sequels to movies? It's like, because producers absolutely have, they don't have an idea of what's going to click with the public. Mm -hmm. And, and so when it does, you know, it's lightning in a bottle. Um, the flat earth thing has never, never gone out of style. Um, yeah. I also thought it was interesting. Of course, we, you know, we'll never know. Um, you know, they removed when they removed the thumb. Uh, let me give you one one other little thing since you're talking about you're taking a class on mm -hmm. social media. And by the way, again, watch Fake Famous if you get a chance. Totally, totally yeah. worth it. Um, I'll tell you a quick story, which is because I and I did a video on this. Um, and, they, and if you if you want the link for it, I'll send it to you later, mm -hmm. which was in YouTube back in the day, like with any search engine. Right. Um, you type in anything in any search engine, it'll say search results equals a number. Right. It's, it's search engine 101. It's been out yeah. there forever. And YouTube has had this. When you went into in 2015 and you typed in flat earth and no, no, no filters on it, it would come up with 50,000 results. Now that doesn't mean 50,000 actual flat earth videos. That just means 50,000 videos that referenced it in one point or another, maybe even the comment section, mm -hmm. but it was still a relatively number, low number. By the end of 2016, it hit 3 million. By the end of 2017, it was a 10 million. And wow. when in the summer of 2018, I mean, it was climbing really, really fast. And I, in fact, yeah. I did videos. I'll, I'll send this to you when I'm done. I'll send yeah, you the string do. because what was happening was I was tracking it. It's like, cause I was curious. It's like, I go, let me see when I type in NASA, let me see if I type in the yeah. Beatles. Let me see if I type in, um, if they're know, experiencing uh, the same Kate, Kate, Katy yeah. Perry, you know, what sort of numbers they're getting. And we were crushing them. We were cracking wow. so fast to where the only people that were ahead of us at the time were people like, you know, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and yeah. Justin Bieber, you know, small players like that. And one of the guys that was really close to us was Donald Trump. He was president at the time in 2018. And I, and I was doing the math and going, yeah, you know what? I think we'll, we'll get him probably by the end of the summer, mm -hmm. six months, six months later. You know, that, that's when I think we'll get him it wasn't even six weeks and all of a sudden somebody writes me and they go, dude, we just, we just passed Donald Trump. It's like, are you out of wow. your mind? It's like, wow. And yeah. We were at, he was at 20.8. We were at 20.9 million. Right. That's Search incredible. Result. Yeah. Here's where it gets weird. Right. And I actually made a strange world episode and I'll link that to you as well. Mm -hmm. Called, um, and I, again, you know, you get year you go starts starts pumping up. It's like you know, team team spirit. You know, you know, yeah. um, team, teamwork makes the dream work. That whole thing. And I said I made a show, a podcast called "Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States," and that was a, probably a big mistake because at that point, because there are think tanks that were watching us. You know, like anything, the, yeah. the government watches all sorts of things. They somebody did not like that, and within god not even not even four shows later four weeks later somebody calls me up and they go dude the scoreboard's gone and i go i go what are they stunting our numbers what what, what are you talking about and it's like dude it's gone the whole line is gone there are no more search results and it's like 
what are you talking about? I go, and I go, what are we talking, baby with the bathwater? Are you serious? <laughs> and, I, and I knew exactly what had happened because, you know, I had nerds for friends wow. for a number of years, which yeah. was you sit at that nerd meeting. And it's like, okay, we can, we can ratio them down. We'll like, what we do like a, like multiply by 0.75, then we'll ratchet it down. And then some guy at the end of the table, because it always comes down to one guy, right? Some, some guy at yeah. play, it's like, no, just pull it. Just freaking pull it. Just get rid of it. Yeah, like stars, stars in the moon. No stars at all, ever. And it's like, wow. it's like, uh, it's like pull, pull the whole thing. And it's like, what? It's like, can we do that? It's like, yeah. Who's, who's gonna know? Who's gonna know except these guys? These guys are the only ones that are paying attention That's anyway. So interesting, yeah. And it's gone, and it never came back. It was permanent. And I, I freaking lost my mind because it's like, are you serious? I go, this is internet. And remember, Google owns YouTube. Yeah. Right? It is search engine 101. That has literally been in search engine since we've had search engines, which is search results yeah. equals number. In fact, you go into YouTube, uh, Google right now, it'll say that. YouTube, it was pulled forever. They never explained why. It was no announcement. They just removed it one weekend and it was over. And people say, well, it's delusions so of grandeur. You think you think it had anything to do with you guys. They're going, why wouldn't it be us? We were the only ones that were looking at it. And we were, not yeah. only that, we were saying, we're so hot. It's the... um. It was the, remember that cheerleading line, you know, we got more, look at the score, we got more. Yeah. We were doing that constantly. It's like, yeah, we are crushing it. You know, try and stop us. And all of a sudden, we're it's like, yeah, no the president. Broke. Yeah, we're, seriously. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. We, literally, once we passed him, the only people that were ahead of us were, um, <clears throat> again, this was search results, not to be confused with actual sub count, which is a whole nother thing right. in social media, which you didn't know, which is since you can buy likes and clicks, you can buy that, but you can't yeah. buy the search results. So guys that had like, I don't know, we'll, we'll just use PewDiePie, for example. PewDiePie mm -hmm. at the time had like 40 million subs. Yeah, whatever. 40 million subs. Are, and yet he only had 5 million search results. That's kind of odd. Why Why would you have only 5 million search? Because the, the subs were absolutely fake. The, the, the search results means that there's other people making videos about your topic. Yes. PewDiePie may have had 40 million subs. Not many people were making videos about PewDiePie by comparison. Right. Um, and and by the way, a quick little side story about PewDiePie. I got to bring this up because it was it won't be talked about in um, uh, a separate story. Which is he was one of the early guys that his team figured out you could buy, you get paid on YouTube for hits and likes and subs, right? Mm -hmm. so you take some of that money, you buy more likes and hits and subs, right? And it well, becomes uh, a self. It, yeah, it fits. Uh, so then you're getting a discount because it's kicking back to you. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but when do you stop? Right? Because then it becomes cyclical. And he never stopped. And so all of a sudden he was at 40 million subs, 50 million subs. By the time he was, I think, pushing 60 million subs, Hollywood called him. They said, dude, we got to get you on a television show. You're freaking huge. Right? He goes out and he does a, a sh very short lived television show called um, Let's Prank PewDiePie. Of course, because it's a prank show. And that's what. Uh, yep. and, like, and it tanked immediately the, the ratings were abysmal and the producer's like what happened why wasn't anybody watching the show and it's like because there was nobody watching the show because he doesn't have anybody watching him it's all fake yeah one one more quick story for you on PewDiePie. i gotta, I gotta throw this out there because you'll you'll totally get mm -hmm. this which is i remember i remember because I, I i sat down at one point and started watching some of his stuff it's like all right what's the freaking deal here right because he had more than um like justin bieber at the time had 30 yeah. You know, so, right? And you're telling me this kid from Sweden has 60 who does, you know, who makes Minecraft videos and, and just pokes fun right. at him. And I watch him. Going, it's not that great. And all of a sudden he he's yelling at the screen because he's complaining. He's going, look, you guys need to buy my gaming chair that he's sitting in because because when my my distributor says when I sell 100 of these things, I get a price discount. I'm going and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you made a mistake, my friend. You haven't sold 100 gaming shares and you have 60 million subs? Yeah, freaking fraud. So. Wow. That's <gasps> so interesting. Oh yeah, social media. But I will I will send you, sorry, I will send you that thing. I'm not kidding you. We it we're different from the other conspiracies. The other conspiracies, you can you can bury other conspiracies in the desert and you can ratio them and and keep them out of the the public eye. But mm -hmm. with ours, they had to make policy changes. I mean, come on, monetize yeah. us 70% less. We're going to remove us from the search engine. No, I'm sorry. You're going to remove the whole search engine to yeah. where, and, and I'll even show you screenshots. You, you're probably not even old enough to remember.
that used to be a thing. You typed in something into YouTube and say, oh, yeah, tractor maintenance, search results, it goals 35,000. So many. Yeah, yeah that, line, that is incredible. Forever gone. All right, what else can I answer oh. for you? Um, I actually, I think I probably have to get going, but okay. I do, I have like maybe one more question for you that could be very brief if you'd like. That's fine. I, I will. Okay, shorten. perfect. It's another kind of left field one, but it's my favorite one to ask people. Um, and you yeah. can take it from a flat earth perspective. You can just take it like generally in your life. Um, oh how hopeful are you for the future? Oh, do you want me to be a, sh that, that's a short answer? <laughs> well, that's okay. also why I felt bad asking it. I, okay, no, no, that's fine. Like, the future of flat, the like future of flat earth or the future, the future in, in general. Can, future of flat earth will, will the future of flat earth will never diminish. I am not worried about the future of flat earth. Flat earth is crushing it all day long. I mean, I am living, I am living freaking proof of that. Um, I'm going to a meetup. Um, they're flying me out to a meetup. We do another conference after that. I, I've done, I've gotten opportunities to do things in flat earth, which normal people would have would have said impossible. In fact, if you would have bet, I, if I was a betting man, ten years ago, mm -hmm. and said, oh yeah, by the way, you know you're going to be a flat earth cult leader. It's like, yeah, whatever. What? I mean, it's, it's the dumbest thing ever to right. be. But, but yet that's yeah. I've gotten to do so many fun things and met so many amazing people because of that. The future in general. <sighs> okay, you probably heard it before, but I'll, I'll give you to, I'll give you the the Reader's Digest version. Um, I think we are in the middle of a giant reset. I think America after World War II was um, a limited time offer. Meaning the only reason we got to expand and become the glory that we are is because we were the only really untouched nation during World War II. We, we surged forward while everyone else was picking up the smoldering ruins of their country. And the you cannot have a new world order, which I believe in. You cannot have a new world complete order and America still be intact the way it is. Meaning, I mean, come on, uh, you're not old enough to remember, but we we were one of those few countries that we wouldn't even implement the metric system, for God's sakes. We tried that when you're in sixth grade. We're like, nope, <laughs> foot, the ounce, the pound. You know, imperial no. system. The, the, yeah, the imperial system, no. I mean, it has more flavor, has more character, has more tradition. Um, I defend so, the Fahrenheit over Celsius. For like actual temperature reading, I think it makes yeah. more sense. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but 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 being that, but America has to be knocked down a peg. It has to be taken. It can't be in the same status. And so would they have been trying for a long time to take America down to other levels of the world. And in doing so, it's is a it is a painful process. You are going to see more of that this year. This year, I mean, 24. We've been waiting for this one. There's, there's some weird stuff happening on the horizon. I think the election is going to be a nightmare. Uh, you you wait. You wait. I, I firmly believe, yeah. by the way, that Biden will be pulled out. You probably heard this already. Um, Michelle Obama will be the candidate with Gavin Newsom as the VP or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, the reason why I say this is because mainstream media is not saying it's a conspiracy. And because, because you know what? Objectively, look, I don't vote. Objectively, from an outside standpoint, that's a great idea. You yeah. get the Obamas back in the White House. It's oh my god, that's that's gonna work if you can actually pull that off. Of course, you're gonna have to mess around with the election, and who knows when Trump loses a second time, which I think he will. Uh, then what happens then? Does it turn? You want to again? I'll send you the trailer for it. Um, uh, I don't want to get into too much because it's it's too long of a thing, and you got to go into it. Have you seen the trailer for it? I will send it to you right after we're done. Have you seen the trailer for the British movie um, Civil War? No. Oh, that wait, movie is where is where the, the states start seceding from the union and start attacking is each other. It's coming out this year with Kirsten Dunst. Yes, I have seen that. I see they keep playing the trailer for it. Um, yeah. I've like that, been to a couple movies recently, and I they keep playing yeah. the trailer for that before it. Yeah, that that trailer is freaking my circles out because. You don't. We, we've never made a, a movie like this before, where it's like, and yeah. beforehand, it's like, oh, you you couldn't. I mean, a, literally a secession movie in modern times. Uh, beforehand, it'd be absolutely unthinkable. But now we're thinking yeah. like, oh crap, this actually could happen because you know, and yeah. come on, put, and to put that out during an election year, and it's a British production house. It's a twenty four. It's totally UK. It's yeah. like, oh great, uh, be careful what you wish for, Britain. 
because we've got your back the entire time. You know, that's a yeah. whole other thing. Anyway, so the future for, sorry, very, very short version. The future right now is going to, is completely, nothing's off the table. Uh, chaos, we're ready for it regardless uh, in our circles. We've been, we've been, other people may be running, running in the streets, hands in the air screaming. We'll be like, yeah, it's about freaking time. Get this, get this show on the road. Um, but, yeah. but anyway, that that's what I. So yeah, the the future for us, great. For the rest of the world, not so much. Depending on who you're, who you're looking at. So gotcha. There you go. Awesome. Before, Thank you so I, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I let you go, um, and I will mm -hmm. send you those links again. You'll be fascinated with the trends of, of what we did. Mm -hmm. Um, do is there anybody else? Do you have enough people, or do you? Is there any demographic you need to to grab that you have grabbed? Um, I, so demographic wise, thank you, by the way, for sending me, oh my gosh, I'm already forgetting his name. Is it David? David White. It's not David. David. Yes. Thank I, you for I sending me his contact. I heard by the way, that he may be Jewish. I can't confirm that. 